go from there. James, would you lead us in prayer? Gracious Holy Father, we are so thankful, Lord, to have you and have you to lean upon. Thank you, Lord, for this time we have together to go into your word and study and learn. And Lord, that we might know more how to walk in the way that you would have us to go. Keep our minds open, Lord. Keep our hearts open that we might receive it and go out and explain the word to others. Yes, in Christ's name. Amen. All right, our uh, scriptures text is Psalm 74, 1 through 9. <clears throat> now go ahead and read that. Psalm 74, verses 1 through 9. <clears throat> o God, why hast thou cast us off forever? What's, why does thine anger smoke against the sheep of the pasture? Remember thy congregation, which thou hast purchased of old, the rod of thy inheritance, which thou hast redeemed, this Mount Zion, wherein thou hast dwelt. Lift up thy feet into the perpetual desolations, even all that the enemy hath done wickedly in the sanctuary. Thine enemies roar in the midst of the congregation and set up their ensigns for signs. A man was famous according as he had lifted up axes upon the thick trees. But now they break down the carved work thereof at once with axes and hammers. They have cast fire into the sanctuary and have defiled by the casting down and dwelling place of thy name to the ground. They said in their hearts, let us destroy them together. They have burned up all of the synagogues of God in the land. We see not our signs. There is no more any prophet Neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. Now I have a real long introduction and a real short sermon. So I want to start with the introduction. Not too long ago, denominations had their ensigns, their signs, and uh, there were those who didn't want to be, they didn't want somebody in Nashville to dictate how they ran the church. They wanted the Lord to, in whatever amount of understanding they had. And so they wanted that freedom, and they got away from the denominational church and became non-denominational. It didn't take very long before non-denominational became one of the denominations. So that didn't work too well. <clears throat> But one of the concerns of it is that we who go to church and read our Bible and hang out with each other, whatever denomination we're in, we tend to get wordy. We say things the world don't understand. We have a church vocabulary. And it makes it very hard sometimes and difficult. And I have tried very hard not to speak and be church. However, I find myself making a mistake in any way. For example, I say, let's slay giants. Well, how do you do that? That's a church term, so to speak. And it, you know, when the, the devil comes against you, uh, to stand in Christ and put on your armor and fight the giant. Uh, but how? And break it down. Show us how to do that because they're coming at me all the time. And, and I don't know how. That's churchy words. Cross the Jordan. What's the Jordan? Well, that's a river over there by the promised land. And uh, so I find myself speaking like that and I really don't want to. First, I want to give you a spiritual secret. You have to have spiritual eyes and ears to hear but I want to break down a giant to you before we start. Years ago, back when Joshua, even Noah, they said while he was building the ark, there was giants in those days. 
And uh, the times will be the same as Noah when Christ comes again. And uh, when Joshua, and they went across the Jordan River into the Promised Land to take Jericho, there were giants in the land. There was talk whether or not that these uh, large people, really giants, 15 feet, over in other countries they found skeletons 32 feet high, measuring them while they lay in the ditch. And uh, but these giants were caused because angels took in man's daughters and this super being, this super giant came to be. I don't know if that's true. But that kind of wave of thinking is here today. And there's thoughts that Satan is trying to recreate something in his image. He's trying to take down God, be like God, be better than God. And uh, during the tribulation, he's going to put up a statue in the corner of the temple. And when he makes it talk and come alive, that's the desolation of the temple that Daniel speaks about. When it really gets nasty, three and a half years of peace, three and a half years of tribulation. But what I want you to understand is the giants were real. And they died away. Now there's talk that Satan is used in DNA and cloning and making giants to fight in the battle of Armageddon. Now how would you know if that's true? The talk and the gibberish, the gossip about it, takes off our mind from reality. We begin to wonder, how were the pyramids made? Maybe these giants did pick up these big rocks. And so we get into wondering about things we have no business wondering about. And when we get into the wondering and we decide that these things can't be true, then we put aside or lay aside the fact that giants were real. Anything in the Old Testament was physical, but it was an ensign of the spiritual today. The Old Testament concealed the New Testament, and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. So as we see what happened in the Old Testament family of Israel, we learn and find samples for how we're to live today. I said all of that to say the giants are alive and well in the spiritual realm. And we really do have to fight and take down giants. That's not a term, a churchy word in itself, by itself, it's more. I want to give you an example of a giant. I don't want to character assassinate, and I don't want to get into politics. But for the sake of understanding a giant, what if a spiritual giant, a demon, of Satan's work. Entered a man and he became president. Don't know where he's born for sure. All of his accomplishments in college they've never shared. Can't find. Don't know if they're true. A man who has never had a job worked in Chicago in the uh, business of helping people find, you know, I can't remember the exact word, but it was not a job. It was helping in the realm of voluntary services to make programs for the people. Community organizer. Huh? Community organizer. Community organizer. Never had a job. Becomes the president of the United States is re-elected, which blows almost everybody's mind how it happened. But if a spiritual demon, a giant, 
entered this little man. And he begins to bring down the greatest evangelistic nation in the world. Makes a rich country poor. Defeated. And if another demon, I'm not saying this is true, this is an end sample. This is so you understand what I'm talking about when I talk about giants. Another demon, the giant of Satan, enters the attorney general. And the black men with clubs that stood at the voting booth and intimidated voters never go to court. Two people, white people in a car, reporters, were beat by 15 or 20 black people on a Chicago red light. They were not even charged. If things that were supposed to go to court, things that are supposed to be at trial, he decides he's not even going to charge them. And then if you are saying Jesus, say something about a gay, or you're against the political administration that is today, the IRS will threaten you with an audit, and you're gonna be charged and go to jail for being an American and having an opinion. So now you understand what a giant is in the spirit. They're alive and well, and it's, that leads us to our text so that I can share the text with you and you understand what we're talking about. Verse 1. O God, why hast thou cast us off forever? The people of Israel were standing in ruin, crying out to God. That's us today. It's a parallel, physical example of the spiritual realm today. And as we stand in ruin, the church, the blood bought, the redeemed, the light, the salt that's supposed to save the people of the land has no power. The salt's lost its savor. We're running from the demons. We got gems in the church so we don't ever have to go out and see the evil world get involved. We've abandoned the mission of Christ. And when we find we need God, when we wake up from our sleep long enough to see, we cry out to God, why have you cast us off forever? Our prayers don't get answered. The finances aren't there. The ability to come together and be what God has called us to be, the very bride of Christ, is an impossible task. God, why don't you intervene and stop the giant demons? Why don't you bring, you know, God lifts up and he brings down. Why don't you take this man out and let America be America? Let us send missionaries to the country. And like Corey Tin Boom, they walk around and the bullets don't hit them. And the guards don't see them. The miraculous happens. We call on God and things come down from heaven and we have abilities to do things we never had. And the enemy's afraid. Iran, they're willing to die. Put uh, bombs on themselves. Now how do you fight an enemy who's willing to die, isn't afraid of your gun? God will put fear in the hearts of our enemies if we'll turn to him. Oh God, why hast thou cast us off forever? It's gone on and on and on and getting worse and worse and worse. Why does thine anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture? What is that? Smoke. It's mercy and grace. It should be fire. And the God is not smoking against the enemy. His anger is kindled against the sheep. 
The church is under a cloud of smoke and can't see their hand in front of their face. Nobody's anguishing over it. Remember that congregation which thou hast purchased of old, the rod of thine inheritance which thou hast redeemed. We're the church, the blood ball for redeemed, the bride of Christ, standing in ruin under a cloud of smoke and asking God, where are you? Why have you cast us off forever? In Mount Zion, wherein thou hast dwelt. Mount Zion, of course, is Jerusalem, but we're the temple of the living God. Where, where you have dwelt, when we got on our knees and prayed, you came, you answered. When we saw wrong, you gave us the ability to make it right. We prayed, fasted, called on you, and you came quickly. And now, no more. Lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolations. Even all that the enemy hath done wickedly in thy sanctuary. What we're going to see here in the next couple of verses is the giants have come into the sanctuary, the church. They're infiltrated everywhere. They're running the show. The church is on fire. The sheep are under smoke. He's winning. Satan's winning. And God's people are hiding. Asleep. Don't know. I don't know. Verse 3. Lift up thy feet against the enemy. The desolations. Do something, O oh God. They have done wickedly in the sanctuary. Thine enemy roars in the midst of the congregation. They set up their ensigns for signs. The enemy has come into the church, into the pride of Christ, into the sanctuary, into the assembly, the congregation. There's a lion there. He's roaring. Satan standing in the middle of the church proclaiming his giants are coming in and bringing down the signs and the things of God and putting up their own incense in the church. Back then it was the synagogue, the sanctuary. The Jews were standing in ruins saying, where are you, God? And telling us how it was. And I'm telling you how it is. Verse 5, a man was famous according as he had lifted up his axe upon the thick trees. He's given a, a sample of how a woodman would go out into the forest and just start cutting down beautiful thick trees and fall and felling them without a reason. Just to do destruction. The trees, the beauty, the wood of the sanctuary. Our forefathers gave their lives, walked with God. What they thought was treasure and beauty. We're allowing the enemy to cut down the very things they live. The congregation. They're putting up their own incense. The man was famous, according up his lifted up his axe upon the thick trees. But now they break down the carved work. They break down the beauty. They're beating everything in the kindle, kindle, uh, congregation, the synagogue, that was wonderful and glorious and of God with axes and hammers. Roaring in the congregation. Let's go back a minute and study that. The government has become Satan's lapdog. Gay is legal. Don't you ever say anything bad about it. Men marrying men. 
trying to adopt and raise a child. He's making sin legal. Satan and his giants. Anything that was precious to God, anything present to the present, precious to the church and congregation, is torn down. And now we've got adultery. Islam moving in. But Christianity, don't you ever mention that on the street. Don't talk about Jesus, no Ten Commandments in the courtroom. Now they break down the cardboard, therefore, at once, with axes and hammers. They have cast fire into the sanctuary. They have defiled the casting down and dwelling place of thy name to the ground. Again, let me say they're standing in ruin, saying, God, where are you? Have you cast us off forever? There's a lion roaring in the middle of the sanctuary. Everything that's of God is being torn down. And the church does not see, does not care, is not doing anything about it. There's this feeling in the church that, that we're doing okay, and if everything goes all right until Jesus comes, I'll be all right. Let's just let it be like it is. While wow, we're being destroyed. There's destruction going on. Verse 8, they say in their hearts, let us destroy them together. They have burned up all the synagogues of God in the land. Churches are closing like that. There's not enough people in the pew to pay the salaries, to pay the bills. And when they get ready to close, I said last night to you, Elaine, or yesterday. I'm a preacher called anointed to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'll go preach for free. She said, you'd have to go over the head of the guy in charge in Daleville because he's not doing anything, doesn't care. It wouldn't do any good to go over his head because from the head office they're saying, we've paid the bill for months. We've kept the place open. We're paid to have the yard cut. We're not going to do it anymore. We're just going to let it go. And he can't do anything. The church is being drunk down. God's synagogues are being burnt to the ground and nobody sees or cares. Verse 9, we see our signs. There is no more. Any prophet, together with their Together, neither is there among any that knoweth how long. They're saying, where are the men of God that cry out in anguish and agony and care? Where is the ones that stand on the wall and roll the trumpet? Satan's killing them. It says they're being dragged down. Read it. They aren't anymore. The men of God, the signs, the ones God would speak to that the church could come to for guidance, to get their eyes open, to know what's going on. Their lives are threatened. They're not going to be anymore if it continues. Are we going to stand and let this happen until there's no hope? Jesus said, come while there's light. Because the day of darkness is coming when you cannot see at all. You'll stumble. We're almost there. Is the church going to do anything? Do they care? Dare I use the word falling away? We need to take down giants. We need to stand. One can make a thousand run. Two, ten thousand. Explain this taking down giants, Gary. All right. When Joshua and Israel crossed the 
Jordan River and entered into the promised land, God told them to circle the city seven times and blow your trumpets. They didn't have any guns. They didn't do anything. It's another churchy word, Christ rest. Enter into Christ rest. They didn't do anything but have faith in what God told them to do, what the godly leader instructed them to do, and the walls fell without them ever doing anything but believing. You want to take down a giant? Walk with God. Get on your knees and pray. Ask Him to give you instruction. Read His Word. And take a stand by faith. Them people are just people like us. The guy stood there with a pot and a horn. And his 12 foot wall, 7 foot thick, mighty city. Them people going to come out here with my butt. <laughs> they had nothing but the word of God and faith. It was a big city. When they surrounded it, they were apart. There was a distance between them. Every one of them had to stand. Every one of them had to believe. And when God said so, every one of them had to do exactly what he said, and the walls fell. You want to take down a giant? Find out in your life what the mountain is. Find out what's in front of you that's preventing you. Get up. Read the word of God asking for guidance. And step out into the water like Peter. And if you drown, you drown. And learn that God's word is true. And walking on water is not a big thing. That giant will run. But he won't run because you cowardly mention God's word. Get behind me, Satan. You're an offense to me. The Bible says if I read the Bible, you have to run away. Mm -hmm. That won't do, people. If we're going to be the church, the blood bought, the redeemed, if we're going to be the army of God, if we're going to pick up our cross and follow Christ, if we're going to believe, Jesus said, is there any faith when the Son of Man returns? We're going to step out in the name of Jesus and expect the walls to fall and the giants to run, clean up our torn up, beat up, no good sanctuary, and put incense back in it that resemble God, and pray together and hold hands and take back the land. But it starts with caring, believing, and obedience. Now, I'm going to close here in a minute, but I'd like to say if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you're having giants, headaches, addictions, problems, marital, financial, you can't marry God for profit. You can't come to get deliverance to escape hell. But you can come and be a member of the family of God and ask him to make of you a new creature in Christ if you're willing to put away your old life. If you realize by the tongue of the Holy Spirit on your heart because the gospel is the power of the salvation, as I say what I'm saying, God tucks on your heart, you knew everything you've done when you had to steer a fit will ram up. 90 mile an hour into a brick wall, over and over. Give it to Jesus. Cry out, I need a Savior. Someone who loves me and cares and will show me the way. And he will. Embrace the cross of Christ and admit to God it should have been you. Ask for grace and mercy and help. God loves you, cares, and he'll be there. That's taking down the first giant. Believe. And he'll help you. But it's not getting rich, escaping your problems. It's not Jesus is going to come sweep you off your feet. 
make everything good. He's going to be closer in the brother. He's going to show you the wrong and how to make it right. He's going to forgive you and be a lamp and a light to your feet. To give him the spirit. Right now I'm going to ask everybody to pray. And if you don't know Jesus, pray this prayer after me. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I'm, I'm done. I'm a sinner. I, I keep going around in circles. Nothing seems to work. And the giants are eating me alive. I need a Savior. Lord, would you be my Savior? Come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins. Make me a new creature in Christ. In Jesus' name. Now, y'all keep your heads bowed. I want to give you time when it's quiet to decide what you're going to do in your heart. Is anybody ready to stand and take down a giant or two? We've been looking around to see what Jesus is doing and he's not doing anything. God is not around. His wonderful, marvelous miracles, his intervening in our behalf is not happening. So we need to cry out each one at our place on the wall and say, Lord, just like the lost sinner, make me the soldier you'd have me to be. Forgive me. Have your way. Amen. You know, it's not so much we talk about the potter and the clay and how the potter is God and he takes the sniff, he finds the lump, he smashes it and does it all again. God's thrown down the whole vat of clay. Except for the blood of Jesus, he annihilated us just like he told Noah. Man is evil through and through. Keeps turning back to what he was, like a dog who was born. Praise God because of Christ. Paul said, what I would do, I do not. And what I want to do, I don't do. It's something of that nature, but it's chasing your tail. We never seem to get to where we want to be. We've got to walk in the Spirit. We've got to be a new creature in Christ. We've got to quit being carnal and call out to the living God and face giants. prophets are dying. There aren't many. And soon there'll be none. What are you going to do? God bless you. I never had that on. <laughs>